Cut Down to Size at High Noon, A Math Adventure, by Scott Sundby, illustrated by Wayne Gehan. At first glance, Cowlicht looked just like any other small frontier town. The people who lived there looked just like average, everyday folk. That is, until their hats came off. The person responsible was Louis Cators. Louis was originally from France. Rumor had it that he was once the hat cutter to the king, but an accidental nip of a royal ear had made it necessary for Louis and his family to leave the country. Louis's hair creations were the pride of Cowlick. The key to Louis's fantastic haircuts was scale drawing. Louis measured a life-size thing, then used the measurements to create an exact drawing of it, only smaller. Based on the drawing, Louis cut and sculpted and brushed and combed until, voila! You had a cow on your cranium or a hog on your noggin. Louis's son, Harry, was the only one who knew how he did it. Scale down steps. Number one, measure the life size object. Two, decide what scale to use, such as four inches equals one square. Three, divide to reduce the parts equally. 48 inches tail, 48 divided by four equals 12 squares. Four, use the scale measurements to make a small scale drawing. Withers to tail, ground to withers, withers to ear, belly to back, face. Divide measurements by four because four inches equals one square. Today, Louis told Doc Lane, I think I will give you something especially useful. What is it going to be? asked Doc. Just wait and see, Louis said with a mysterious smile. I guarantee you'll like it. And he was right. Doc Lane was mighty pleased with his new haircut, especially when it rained. Daisy Jenkins always asked for just the usual Louis. Daisy knew that you never got the usual when Louis cut your hair, but of course, laughed Louis good-naturedly. Daisy and her three children all got something out of the ordinary, just as she had expected. One morning, as Louis cut and Harry swept up the clippings, the door to the shop burst open. There stood a stranger, all dressed in black, and a voice that sounded like gravel beneath a boot. He said, Name's Buzzsaw, Buzzsaw Bart. I've heard tell of your fancy French haircutting, and I don't like it one bit. I want my hair cut the way I like, and I'll tell you exactly how to do it, Buzzsaw demanded with a sneer. Then he let loose a challenging laugh that echoed through the room like a midnight thunderstorm. Now, no one told Louis how to cut hair. He needed complete artistic freedom. Depending on his mood, you might leave his shop with a bluebird or a vulture atop your head. Louis wasn't about to let this buzzsaw character push him around. I've never seen you around these parts before. What brings you to Calix, stranger? he asked. I'm here to set up shop, Buzzsaw smirked. I'm a barber. In fact, I'm the best barber in the West. There's room for only one of us in this town, Louis said defiantly. I reckon we'll just have to see about that, Buzzsaw snarled. Meet me on Main Street at high noon for a showdown. Then we'll see who sticks around and who hits the trail. You will, said Louis. No, you will, said Buzzsaw. I'll stay, said Louis. No, you'll leave, said Buzzsaw. And with that, Buzzsaw Bart stomped out. Louis snipped and cut until there was a falcon battling with a snake on Bad Luck Billy's head. Gosh, Louis, he's a mean one. What are you going to do? Bad Luck Billy asked. Do? Louis laughed. Why, well, I'm going to cut the dull edge varmint down to size. As the sun rose in the sky and high noon approached, all of Calic turned out onto Main Street, milling around like a bunch of restless cattle before a storm. The rustling and whispering died down when Louie and Buzzsaw stepped out into the middle of the street and squinted at each other. Then, as the sun reached its zenith, the two men strode toward each other until they were face to face their hands poised above their holsters. The town clock struck twelve. Faster than a rattlesnake strikes, they drew their weapons. Louis raised his scissors and started snipping and shearing furiously at Buzzsaw's hair. 
Buzzsaw started clipping and cropping Louie's hair with equal speed. Although the sun that day was blazing away in a clear blue sky, so much hair started to fly that soon it was as dark as a moonless night. The crowd tried to peer through the cloud of hair, but it was no use. They just have to wait for the two to finish what they had started. And then suddenly, the cutting stopped. Hair quietly fluttered onto the dusty street. When the air cleared, the crowd gasped in astonishment. Their sheriff slowly stepped forward and held up two mirrors. Buzz saw and Louis gazed silently at their reflections as a crowd waited. Finally, the glimmer of a smile began to tug at the corners of Louis's lips. Buzz saw too started to grin. The crowd stared in relief. Amazing, said Louis. I've never before had something that was really so small fit so artfully on my head. And I've never had something that is so big fit so skillfully on mine, said Buzzsaw. What's your secret? They asked each other at the same time. Buzzsaw spent the rest of the day showing Louie how to use scale drawings to make small things bigger. First, Buzzsaw measured every part of the life-size object. Then he multiplied the size of each part equally until he had created an exact model of the original object on a larger scale. Grasshopper. One sixteenth inch equals one square. Louis and Buzzsaw liked each other's work so much that they opened a new shop together. Louis scaled big things smaller and Buzzsaw scaled small things bigger. Both were amazed at the new possibilities. They particularly enjoyed working together. The two of them made the town of Cowlick proud. After their first year as business partners, Louis and Buzzsaw had a party. They invited the whole town and gave everybody haircuts for free. People came from miles around and had a hair clipping, floor thumping, barn shaking good time. And Harry found something to do with all those hair clippings. <laughs>